In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 7, Section 4, Calculator Permitted. We're now on the grid in question 31 and 32. We know these will be much easier questions than the last few, 29 and 30, and they're all worth the same. All right, let's take a look at 31. In 1854, during the California Gold Rush, each ounce of gold was worth $20, and the largest known mass of gold found in California was worth 62,400 in that year. What was the weight in pounds of the mass of gold? 16 ounces equals one pound. We've seen this question before. This is a unit conversion. And the question's asking for the weight in pounds of this large mass of gold. And it's $20 an ounce. So the first step is let's figure out how many ounces. We're going to take 62,400. We're going to divide by 20. And this will give us the number of ounces. And so just use your calculator. We've got 62,400 divided by 20. And we have 3,120. 3,120. Now remember, this is ounces. And so we want to convert that into pounds. And they give us the conversion 16 ounces in a pound. So we just divide this by 16. And that will yield our answer. 195 and that's what we're going to grid in all right let's take a look at question 32 if line t is shown in the xy plane and we have to find the slope now there's a couple ways to do this we have points but these are a little tricky we have fractions again i would recommend just using your calculator so you don't make a mistake another option too for these types of questions is if you see a point on the line that is readily discernible. So for example, let's take a look at right here. You see how this crosses exactly over this point? So this is zero, negative three. Remember, all points on the line share the slope. And so this is just easier, in my opinion, than taking five halves or three fifths. So we see this is definitely zero, negative three. Let's for, look for another point that's exactly crosses, how about right here? Right, and that looks right between negative four and negative five, so that, or negative six, so that's negative five, and this is also negative five. And so here's two points that we can use that are just are easier than these fractions. So the change in y, negative three minus negative five, that's gonna be plus, so we're gonna end up with two. Zero minus negative five is plus five, and that's our answer, two-fifths. And notice it's an upward sloping line. If you, for example, were to solve this and get negative, you know you made a mistake. You can't put a negative on a grid. It's also an upward sloping line. Or you could just use these points. This, in my opinion, is a little bit easier. Two-fifths is the answer.